Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. Okay, Shamrock FC is kicking off their 2016 with a card in January. And on that card, we have Ken Hooten, who's fighting... I'm going to say it's Felix Santiliano. It's a bit of an exotic name. He's definitely winning the battle of the uh, names there. He sounds very exotic, Ken. Uh, but first fight of the year, you obviously ha at Christmas time had to have the veg and a little bit of meat, obviously to look after your weight, I imagine. So how, how has your festive training been? Yeah, I've, I've been doing as much training as I can. It's been really busy with the holidays, trying to steer clear of the sweets and everything. I have to drop, I, I walk around 170, 175, so I have to drop about 20 pounds for the fight too. And It's been really tough over the holiday season. It's okay, Ken. I had the sweets for you. I had. I, I made up for all the fighters that are competing in January. Me and Mike, between us, have shared the sweets. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I've, I've I've probably had a lot more than I should. <laughs> yeah, they just got to embrace that cardio now. Got to embrace the cardio. Uh, so Ken, you're, you're fighting yeah. Felix uh, on Shamrock now. It, like we say, Shamrock FC. They like to make an effort with their matchups. Uh, for yourself, you're just getting those fights under your belt in the amateur ranks. Uh, and how are you feeling going into this fight? Then uh, you know, preparation wise, training. Yeah, I, I'm fairly confident. I I do a lot of uh, actual work this time of year as my strength training. I cut wood and split wood, do things like that, and do a little bit of strength training in the gym, a uh, little bit of sparring, a lot more working out on the bags, things like that. Uh, just trying to keep myself in good shape and drop down, keep my cardio up so I don't get myself worn out. Uh, and so then, how, how did you fall into the competing side of the MMA? How did you fall into MMA then? Give us, give myself and everyone at home a, a bit of an insight into who you are and how you got into this. Yeah, uh, I had a bunch of friends I went to school with right after we got out of school, got into it. And I used to train and spar with them to help them get ready. And for years and years, they tried to talk me into doing it. And finally here last year, one of my friends talked me into it. And I went ahead and got in. And went with them down at Branson with uh, Show Fight and JT Tilly and them and I enjoyed it. My friend that got me into it, Archaic Chris Evener, he got an opportunity to go up to Shamrock and asked me if I wanted to come too and I told him, yeah, I was game. And that's how it all started and that's how it all began. Now, Ken, uh, yep. who, who do you, I assume obviously you watched MMA then before you took up the sport. Is there anyone then that you kind of look at and, I'm not say aspire to be, but is there anyone's style in particular that you kind of, you know, you can relate to? Do you just, you know, or do you just do your own thing? Is is, is it anything like that? But I, I kind of do a mix. I've spent the majority of my time training and watching Muay Thai and things like that and some of those fighters in Chai and Bukau and some of those that are basically legendary Muay Thai fighters. I, I like a lot faster paced stand up uh, striking fight. Yeah, Bukau is a bit of an animal. I won't lie, he's a savage. I would not like to be leg yeah. kicked. No, I would like to have a leg kick off him. Not really. No, no, I, well, I don't even want to kick his leg. It'd probably kill my shit. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking as well. I was thinking I wouldn't want to check his leg kicks either. <laughs> I'll, ta I'll tap out yeah. to that. I'll tap out to him. Uh, so, you're, okay then, so let it be easy then to put you down into that kind of like Donald Cerrone kind of stand up with the, you know, the Muay Thai, good hands, good leg kicks, head kicks, that kind of thing. And... Yeah, you're in the same weight class, you know, the 155 is uh, the weight class for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's, I, I like those faster paced. I think it's a lot more enjoyable for the fans, and I, it's a lot more enjoyable to me, myself, doing it to stand up and have them like that rather than the wrestling and whatnot. I, I do a little bit of wrestling and some of the grappling. I've done some of that. and I, if, I, if it's forced to it, I'm ready to do it, but I'd prefer to just stand up and do it like that. Well, that was my next 
kind of uh, point was the worry, the danger of f- kind of focusing or being prepared with the Muay Thai stance and obviously the, what you're doing with your throwing the leg kicks, which puts you on into one leg. You are susceptible to a potential takedowns. And one thing about Donald Cerrone is we can, we'll can use him as an example for, because pretty much anyone who's into MMA will know who Donald Cerrone is. His, his uh, I'd say his counter to all of that is the fact that he's very good off his back. You know, he's very good with the transition to the triangles and arm bars when he's when someone goes to take him down. Uh, is it? Have you made sure then that your strength is similar in that way that you know? Because if you like to stand and bang, you're going to possibly be wanting to throw maybe two or three, four, maybe four, a four punch combo. Well, mixed with kicks, but if you're going to throw that many shots, someone might be shooting in. Do you kind of make sure then that if you do get taken down, you're ready on your back, you've got a quick transition to go from what you basically can chain the submissions up, you go from triangle to armbar, etc., and just mix it up like that? Yeah, I, I practice a lot of that stuff in case I get down like that, and I, I do a lot of stretching. The majority of the training I do is stretching and flexes, things like that. I stay nice and limber and flexible so I can roll around and get in a lot of positions that a lot of guys, if they don't do that stretching, will have trouble getting into. If they concentrate more on their strength training than their stretching, then I, I like I said, I can get in positions that they have trouble with. Yeah, stretching's a big part of it because especially with, <clears throat> if you're going to do Muay Thai kicking, if you're going to kick a head, someone's head, it's not easy to do if you've got tight hamstrings. No, no, it's not it's not easy to get your legs up that high and have any kind of snap and power on it. And really, in those type of kicks, the the rolling of the hip, unless the straight, other than the straight forward push kick, the main rolling of the hips and the tap on the kicks is where the real power comes. From. And if all your muscles are tight, you don't get that kind of snap when you've got the extension and everything that it takes to do a kick that high. Yeah, you're more forcing the kick then, and then it's not fluid. It, there's not much power in it either. It's 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 so tense. The punt, the kick is so tense. Let's say that it's almost slowed down. Yeah, there's it, not much power in it. Yeah, it's more of a push than an actual impact mm. kick. Whenever they hit with them. Yeah. So, and and do you know what we're gonna see? Probably. <clears throat> well, I hope to see anyway this week. Uh, this uh, not this weekend. Sorry. Uh, I hope to see uh, some fighters that get to do it. A good example would be like you say, Donald Cerrone. He's Beautiful for that stuff. Edson Barboza. He's yeah. another one. He's got some hell hell he's got some good kicks. Uh Carlos Codd. There's a handful of guys with, you know, lethal kind of kicks. And and it is because they're limber, like you say. And and the good thing is you do it for the help with the jiu jitsu on the ground, for the transitioning. And like for stretching is a very important part of the game that people don't understand that but then again it's time. It's some people will put a lot of effort into they'll do a Muay Thai session wrestling then they'll do Jiu Jitsu then they'll do strength and conditioning and they'll leave the stretching bit out you know it's yeah the, the stretching is where actually a lot of the stamina and the muscle stamina and all that comes in because you prolong your stretches and do prolonged flexes and that's where a lot of your muscle stamina comes in keep you from getting your hamstrings or your biceps worn out and all the different stretches that's that has a lot to do with just the strength of the muscle itself and I, I think that is uh, the biggest part of my routine is my stretching and flexing routine yeah I think <clears throat> I think when it comes down to it fighters maybe should realise that they don't have to do stretching even at the gym you know they can do it at home they can put on you know they can binge watch a TV series sit down on the floor and just stretch away while that's on yeah yeah, I'll put on music or put on a TV show I like and spend 45 minutes to an hour, uh, a time or two a day, a few days a week, five, six days a week like that. Just like I said, put on something enjoyable and spend an hour or so stretching. And it really opens up the body. It's, it's a very smart thing to do, you know, Ken. It's, you're already preparing yourself, obviously, in a very smart manner. So when Shamrock FC has the first... Uh, card of 2016 what when, when people tune in to watch it what will we expect to see from you then will we just expect to see a fast paced you know fists elbows knees and feet coming at you that's, that's what I'm looking for that's uh, 
uh, like I said, that's what I think is kind of the most enjoyable for the fans and everything, and that's what I think keeps the fighters the sharpest and on their game is those types of fights, and that's what I'm going to try to provide every time. I mean, it's all about the fans. If, it, if they weren't there, we wouldn't be there. Absolutely. So Felix better be keeping his hands up and his chin down. Yeah, that's the, the hands high. Because I'm, I'm fast with my hits, and they're hard. All my friends I spar with, and everybody tells me I hit like I weigh 250 pounds. <laughs> I'd say I, I probably, I'm nearly, hit, I'm nearly 250 pounds myself after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that can happen over this season. Yeah, I think a lot of people have. I think a lot of people are going to be like that. I think for a lot of us, January's the time to start cutting weight again. Uh, if, Ken. Yeah. Then let's say uh, people want to jump on to follow you in a, in a, in your career, starting off, you know, building up your way to the, the higher levels. How do they start following you now? You know, have you got like a social media stuff they can do? Uh, I haven't really got a whole lot of that going. I've got my own personal Facebook page, which is just my name, Kenneth Hooten. Uh, I've got a business I do a little bit on. It's got a Facebook page. It's the spot at Palm de Terre. I'm a flyboard instructor. And then uh, I've got a, um, I can't think of the name of the website, uh, Tapology. My uh, Tapology's got a page on me on there. You can go on and check my stats and what's been going on and everything. I was gonna say I've got a friend of mine who also we, we train together. He does competing as well, and uh, he he's got a fly, he runs a flyboard company over here. Uh, oh yeah, yeah that, man, yeah. That's another thing that that keeps you in excellent shape for this type of activity too. Yeah, it's it's a strange kind of you didn't you wouldn't think it until you do it, and you wouldn't realize how taxing it is until you've done it. It's it's it looks it looks fun, but it's actually it's a hell of a workout. Yeah, yeah, 10, 15 minutes on the fly board of doing tricks and things is about like a 45 minute to hour full body workout. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the only town that provides a similar rush to this, though. There's there's just yeah. no, no way to explain it to anybody that hasn't done it, and there's no other rush to compare to it. Yeah, they have to, I think, ladies and gentlemen, you'll have to try out fly boarding and try out MMA to get an idea of what we're on about. Uh, Ken, look, yeah. have, have you got. And then any sponsors, you know, do you want to give a shout out as well to your coaches, your friends, family, you know, anyone that's been helping you out and stuff? Yeah, uh, Archaic Ways Fight Club, and Archaic Chris Hevener, his brother Harley Hevener, those are, those are the guys that got me into it the most and that I spend a lot of time with, that I spend time sparring and practicing with, I've known for years. Uh, my beautiful fiance, Jennifer Kennedy, for sticking by me and putting up with me through all this and building up to the fights and everything and the kids for just being so good so good about it such good sports awesome stuff Ken like we say here on on our show we never say good luck we always say have a great fight have a great weekend enjoy the whole experience because it's not about good luck it's not about luck mate it's about how hard you've been training so have a great time and have a great fight against Felix okay thank you very much thank you for having me on